some of his own forgiveness and God's forgiveness fairly recently here. And it's his heart's desire to let you all know how much his church has played a role in this. And this is my friend Khalif Asagai. <laughs> Khalif, have at That was quick. Sitting on. Uh, good morning, everybody. So um, it's just a blessing to be here today. I remember the first time that I walked into Bayside Church. Um, I was a completely broken man. I was at rock bottom with a pretty serious drug addiction that had been plaguing me for years, really since high school. But it really picked up about 10 years ago, actually 10 years ago tomorrow, when I lost my mother. Um, the first thing that I did when I lost my mom wasn't pray. It was get high. And what I did for 10 years to try and deal with my pain wasn't pray, it was get high. And I realized that there was something missing in my life. The drugs were filling a huge void that I was experiencing at all times. But you know what? There was never enough drugs to take for me to feel better. I always felt broken. When I realized that despite my behavior, I had been blessed time and time again. I had the privilege of uh, attending law school at UCLA, passing the bar the first time, starting my own business. I was blessed, but I was still making mistakes. I didn't get that I already had the life that I wanted because I felt so empty. A friend of mine, when I talked to him about, this, uh, about the problems I was having, because uh, I had two of the knots, I was not in church, and things were not going well, and <laughs> he invited me here to Bayside. And uh, he's here today. I, I, I owe him my life, truly, John. I appreciate you. Um, everything in my life changed when I came to this church. I sat in the back corner. Where I still hold down that seat. And because <laughs> I'm kind of late sometimes. Uh, <laughs> and it was the first day of a sermon uh, of the James sermon series. And ever since that day, I refer to James as real talk for Christians. Because James told me, take control of your life. God is calling you here to live his purpose. And so I engaged. I decided that I would finally be accountable to my life's purpose, as God had set it out for me. I had known for many years that I had a calling, but I was fighting against it. I had known for many years that I wanted to see my mother again in heaven, but I was doing nothing to get me there. So I made the decision to join this church, to come religiously, to meet, religiously, right? Uh, <laughs> to meet with my pastor and to really get to know God. And in that process, everything in my life changed. I found my purpose and I healed. I healed. When Bob told me he wanted me to tell the story, I said, when is June 15th? I said, well, it was a Monday. Well, let's do it on Sunday. Because the biggest loss I think you can experience in your life, at least for me, was, was the loss of a parent. But the biggest gain that you can experience in your life is a relationship with God. And that has changed my life. That has changed my life. So much so, actually, I said drugs. Drugs were a problem. That's true. But also women. Um, I did. <laughs> I dated a lot. I was, I was projecting my insecurities and my losses, and I wanted the approval of, of a woman. And, you know, as I grew in my journey with Christ and as I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior, and as I started to get myself to know myself better, uh, Pastor Bob gave a sermon one day, and he said, if you have problems with relationships, my hand is up because I do, uh, he said, maybe you should give it up for a year. Maybe you should just take some time to yourself to get to know yourself and to get to know God. And he said that most people would respond to him by saying, a year? Uh, it's a long time. And I thought, man, I need that. I really, really do. So I met with Pastor Bob, and I said, your sermon really moved me last week. I said, I think I'm going to do it. He said, do what? I said, you know, give up dating for a year. Give up intimacy for a year. He said, wow, I say stuff, but I don't always expect people to do it. <laughs> So I started walking that walk, and it wasn't an easy choice. I was dating somebody who was really spectacular, and, um, but, you know, I was no good for her if I wasn't good for me and if I wasn't good with God. So I walked away, and I spent my time cultivating a relationship with God. 
It's been about just over six months now. And, um, you know, honestly, I need a hug. But, <laughs> but <laughs> my relationship with God is the greatest that it's ever been. My relationship with myself is the greatest it's ever been. And more than anything, I am happy, I am fulfilled, I am joyful, and I am free. And God's forgiveness, God's forgiveness has moved me to live my life's purpose, to pursue all my goals, and to just be a happy, joyful person and spread the gospel to everybody that I meet. So I want to thank you, John, for bringing me to church. Thank you, Bob, and thank you, Jesus, for saving me from my old life and starting my life again. Praise him. How stinking cool is that? And, and I know Khalif has dads over here. Where you at, dad? Yeah, well, dad, where you at? Where? Yeah. Dad, great job. Great job. I know Khalif has some family and some friends here. Thank you for supporting him. Thank you for, for sharing Khalif with us. It, it has been absolutely my pleasure and our pleasure to see this young man change his life in Christ. And just, I know we're way over time. You know, forgiveness interrupts the cycle of resentment. Uh, many of us hold on to our grudges and we want to get payback. You know, Khalif let all that stuff go. But, but the most important thing he did was he forgave himself. Yeah. Khalif forgave himself. And so that's what I want to pray about for you all right now. Because they're in a room this size, there's so many people in this room who haven't gotten over their own junk. And you need to get over it. Because God is over it. So let's pray. Lord, we just bow in reverence and we thank you. We thank you.